So as long as I've been bikepacking, negotiating around the brake lines and cable housing has been a challenge. Do they go in front of the bag? How about behind the bag? Maybe a few up front, one behind? And how long should the lines actually be? While all setups are going to be different, this video will help you understand this conundrum a little bit more. I'll be talking about ideal levers, provide tips when installing handlebar bags, and touch on some other noteworthy considerations. Let's do it. Before we jump into the video, I just wanted to let everybody know that this video is supported in part by Surly Bikes. Surly, they make serious steel bikes for people that don't take themselves too seriously. They make bikes that are versatile and durable that can be dressed up or down for commuting, bike packing, ATBing, gravel grinding, or really whatever you call fun on two wheels. With 15 original dirt friendly platforms, they offer something that fits just about anyone for any style of riding. So for more about Surly, make sure to click this card right here or find the link in the description below. Before you go on a trip, you should inspect your bike. And I did a whole video on this, which is linked below. But when you are looking at brake lines and cable housing, make sure that there are really no red flags, such as drastic kinks or drastic bends. Make sure that the cable housing goes into the brake, derailleur, or shifter as straight as possible, and that any bends are gradual. Also take note of the condition of the lines. Do you see any fluid leaking out? How are the end caps and cable ends looking? Simply just ensure that the bike and brakes are working as intended. If you are installing new housing or brake lines or just trimming them, you should use the general rule of having mostly straight lines with no drastic bends. And this typically leads to having longer lines in general than you normally would on say a bike that's not necessarily trimmed for bike packing bags specifically. I ended up asking a variety of longtime bike mechanics about this, and all of them said that they would err on the side of keeping the lines long. And in general, this is a good idea, especially if you plan on changing the length of say your stem or your bar width or bar type, which will end up necessitating more housing or line. Plus you can always trim them down the road. But there are so many variables that make each setup different, like drop or flat bar, how about the length and sweep and rise of that bar, the type of lever you have and where you actually position it on the bar, and of course, what type of bag you plan on using and how you even pack it. But a good way to figure out your setup is to position everything and dry fit it on your bar before you actually trim the lines. Now this process, it's much easier for drop bars as very little of the cable housing or brake lines are exposed. But for flat bars, as you can see, it gets a little complicated. Let's take a look at this Atzo Voitech that I'm building up for this winter and beyond. So I'm now at the point of this build where I need to trim these crazy long lines and cable housing. So so what I'll do is make sure my bike is on the ground, the levers and shifters are kind of in position where I would normally ride them, and then I will install the handlebar bag and of course install the dry bag as I would normally ride when I'm bike packing with it full, as full as possible. Then extend the lines kind of around the bag or behind the bag, whatever makes the most sense and works best for your particular bag. And then I like to turn the bar almost 90 degrees in each direction to mimic that turning motion and also to kind of mimic, you know, if your bike falls over or potentially you fall off your bike and you get in a crash and a wreck and, you're, and everything's mangled, yeah. It's a good idea to just make sure that you understand how far your brake lines and cable housing can go. From here, I figure out where the lines best sit. I'll mark them, then I'll trim them up. Obviously, if you use multiple bags, you'll probably want to check to see if those particular bags also work with this setup. Generally speaking, what I found is if you have a smaller bag, one that kind of hugs closer to the head tube, it's best to kind of design the cables to go over the bag. Oftentimes with a larger bag, especially one with uh, say a bracket that pushes the bag away from the bar, this is a good candidate for shorter lines. All right, so with this particular setup and with most SRAM brake, flat bar brake levers, we have very limited space, mainly because of the lever body size, which is pretty much gigantic, uh, much larger than say Magura, uh, Hope, or Shimano. And the angle in which the line kind of hits basically goes right into the bag. It's angled more downward. This setup requires much more narrow dry bag and it's just not very ideal. I can't pack nearly as much up front. However, I'm sticking with the SRAM brakes because of dot fluid, as this bike will be used in sub-freezing temperatures for the next few months and mineral oil brakes really, really suck in cold temps. This all leads me to the brake lever. 
because this is basically kind of the crux of this particular setup right now. There's clearly a better brake lever than others. Currently, SRAM might be the worst of the bunch, but word on the street is they are getting a big revamp in 2023, and the line is much more parallel with the flat bar, which will definitely make working with bikepacking bags much easier. Currently, Shimano levers, they're great. They have a great shape. And as you can see here with this XT brake lever, it just has so much more clearance. It's such a smaller body and the angle of the line is just much more friendly for bikepacking bags. Magira also has a great lever. Despite the similar line angle to SRAM, the body is shorter, which allows for more clearance on the bar. And Hope has another great lever with lines similar to the Shimano, where the line almost parallels the bar. While each setup and preference is different, if I had a choice, I'd probably pick a brake that is more in line with the bar, like the Hope or the Shimano brake. I would want the same for a mechanical brake as well, like the Paul levers. I've been really actually loving the Shimano Sora levers on my flat bar grappler. And another one with a great shape is the Avid BB7, just with the line kind of going somewhat parallel with the bar. I guess the biggest downside with the mechanical brake levers is the long distance the body extends from the bar clamp. So another big factor is the rise or sweep of your handlebars. Many alt bars hold handlebar bags better because of this. Drastic rise will help keep levers above the majority of your cargo. And another option like say the Jones bar puts kind of the line automatically in front of the bag. Using SRAM brakes on these bars would certainly give me more cargo capacity, which would be nice. There are also bags such as the Salsa Anything Cradle and many other bags that now come with spacer brackets and foam or rubber spacers. This is not only great to say push the bag off the bar for additional hand positions or on the bar accessories, but it does let that brake line and cable housing breathe a little bit more, which helps keep the bag and lines from say sitting up against your head tube, which can prevent, you know, damage. This leads me to products like the Restrap Bumper Bar that have been launched recently. These are systems to allow you to mount handlebar bags without those handlebar bags kind of squeezing up against your head tube or brake lines or cable housing. There's also some really cheap harness-like systems out there on the internet that kind of mimic this exact same thing. So as you can see, there is no right or wrong way to do this, but rather things to avoid. And there are definitely some components that are better suited than others. Uh, for instance, if you wanna go with that Megura cockpit uh, integration thingy majager with some wireless shifting, you don't have anything up there, but that's not realistic. All right, if you have any suggestions on this topic, leave it in the comment section below. Thank you all so much for watching and until next time, Pedal further.